Well, Bruce, we're keeping a close eye on things here. We all have our fingers crossed, knocking on wood, saying a little prayer that they can get it up today. While we wait and see whether they start the clock running again, let's take a break. We'll be right back. No constraints. The consensus is to proceed with NASA, go for launch. We expect to start the countdown again uh, at any moment now. They're looking to launch in approximately nine minutes from now. However, the clock has not yet started. T minus nine and holding as the anticipation level uh, continues to rise here. They've made their uh, checks among themselves, consensus to proceed. Go for launch was the last word we had. And let's pick up uh, the voice of uh, NASA control here, if we can, for just a moment. Uh, go, PTC. Okay, IUS went ahead and has finished their final launch configuration. Okay, I copy. Uh, nonetheless, we'll establish a new time and then uh, come out of this count uh, uh, upon that time. And, um, Mark Director, uh, excuse the uh, interrupt, uh, proceed. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's all we have, and we can. Now, the important word there is to proceed. And joining me again here at our CBS News coverage headquarters at, at uh, the Space Center is Jeff Hoffman, astronaut Jeff Hoffman. Jeff, you went through this same thing yourself, a long delay strapped into that space shuttle. What are the astronauts thinking and doing right now, and what should we be looking for as we anticipate the start of the clock? Let me set the stage for you a little bit. When you see on the screen the steam and the smoke coming out of the, the uh, engines of the shuttle and coming out the external fuel tank, what you want to realize is that today, fueled up finally and ready to go, the, the space shuttle, is, it's almost like a living being as opposed to a dead piece of hardware. When you go out on the pad on launch day, and you see the smoke and the flame and the fire and the water and, and the, you hear the creaks and the groans, it, the machine has come alive and, and it's a feeling of excitement that, that it gets into the crew's blood. So, you know, I know how much they want to go um, and, and things are looking good now. They have basically completed all of the arrangements that we had expected up to the nine minute hold. The computers are in launch configuration. The cabin has been sealed up. The pressure integrity has been checked. They've checked all of the uh, uh, equipment preparatory to uh, starting up the hydraulic units, which will be done about uh, four minutes into the, uh, into the count. And uh, so far, so good. Jeff, I want to explain, when people saw you with your hand up to your ear, that what you're doing okay. is you're holding up a, a listening uh, device there. I'm which, listening which to the crew talking to launch control, so in case anything happens, I'll be able to give you an update. Just wanted to explain because people are not accustomed to seeing uh, people on television anymore holding that kind of apparatus up to the air, but it's to ensure that we hear that everything uh, a, being said, uh, the crew is in close communication, uh, and you can imagine that uh, inside the orbiter, they've been ready in there. Uh, well, from one way of putting it, they've been ready for two and a half years to fly. But they've been in the orbiter this morning. If you we recall, go. they uh, were expected it, to uh, go at uh, this morning, sh shortly before 10 o'clock Eastern time. And they're, they're planning to uh, come out of the hold about three minutes from now. Right. What at, that means uh, is nine, approximately three minutes from now, we'd start the countdown of the clock. Which would mean about an 1137 launch. All right, Eastern an 1137 time. launch now being anticipated because the countdown has not yet resumed, although everything looks good now for the countdown to resume. We have a nine-minute countdown uh, once they start counting down, hoping for a liftoff at uh, 1137. What about the wind problem? Well, the winds began picking up way up there and uh, got in more uh, consistent with what uh, NASA had programmed into its computers. And uh, Bruce Hall, we've been in this situation, this kind of situation, so many times before where the tension level is high, we're anticipating the clock is about to start, but until you actually get the liftoff, you aren't going to know this going to go. You never know, and we've gone down several times for the last couple of seconds. We had a couple of times where we've had an abort at T minus three seconds, T minus four seconds. And we, in a very technological world, and it's a very complex machine, our hold that we've gone through right now, it's a very simple problem. The astronauts and a couple of the controllers were not able to hear the weather report. And so as the uh, latest information was being relayed, 
they couldn't hear so now we're having this delay of about five six maybe eight minutes because of that uh, Jeff uh, if you weren't hearing something of uh, utmost importance at the moment this is part of of the change in philosophy if that isn't to, to state it uh, to overstate it that NASA has had uh, that there was a time uh, when NASA was looking to go much more than they are now. The attitude these days is, look, if we don't have everything that all of our criteria are not in order, then we're not going to press it. We're not going to rush it. We have a lot of but, time. We'll push but it I got to say one thing. We are still looking to go. But you're right. As far as criteria like the weather and so on, as opposed to an innocent until proven guilty, we've got to assume guilty until proven innocent. Unless everybody can demonstrate positively that we are ready to go, we don't go. Now, when they resume the clock, which we expect to happen uh, very shortly, with an about hour, one minute, uh, we hope to start it within one minute. Now, if the clock resumes, which the countdown starts then, the next thing to happen is the ground computer automatic launch sequence will begin. That's correct. All functions are, are, remain under ground computer control until the shuttle computer takes over at 31 T minus seconds 31, before 31 the launch. seconds. Some of the important things you should be looking for uh, about eight minutes, we're going to start the process of bringing the computer onto its own internal power using its own fuel cells. About seven minutes, you'll see the white room swing away. Uh, in case of a launch emergency where the crew had to get out quickly, it could come back in about 15 seconds. Uh, at T-minus five minutes, they're going to start up the hydraulics. Uh, this is what is going to power the uh, air surfaces, the ailerons, the rudder, and most important, the main engine steering. Looks like, let's watch the clock to see if we're just getting ready to pick it up. Five seconds to go. One, T minus nine minutes and counting. Fantastic. The countdown events are now being controlled by the ground launch sequencer from now until the T minus three. Let me point something out to you. When, when the uh, hydraulics do come on, we will then start to test all of the equipment. You'll see uh, in the close-up views of the shuttle, the ailerons will start to move, and eventually we'll actually see the engine bells moving. And this is an incredible moment for the astronauts sitting in there because they can feel the entire shuttle start to shake. This is about three and a half minutes before launch, and it's quite a, it's a spooky feeling, really, to be sitting there knowing that you're not supposed to launch for another three and a half minutes, and yet all of a sudden things start to shake underneath you. All right, 8.20 to go. Unless the clock stops, it'll be launched in 8.16, 8.15, 8.14 seconds. When do you feel it? Jeff Hoffman, that you're really going to go. Is it that moment when they say, put your visor down? I think for me, that was it. And, and that's what uh, a lot of people say when, you know, all the equipment is getting ready. But your final preparation for launch is that moment when you say, crew, you're go to close your visors. Your visors come down. And I remember saying, all right, we're going. Well, they haven't put the visors down yet. That would happen at T minus four. We're at uh, T minus 745. And that, I, in fact, I heard Rick Houck uh, mention that they might want to delay that a little bit, and we'll stand by on that call. Well, now, the new launch gu guidelines are that between T minus nine and T minus five, that's where we are now, that's being correct. at T minus uh, seven and a half, the ground launch system will be monitoring between 20% and 50% more items before committing to launch than was the case on previous shuttle flights. And I think that's typical. By the way, there we see the, the access arm is retracting. Back into position within about 15 seconds. This arm is swinging away. The white and room arm is swinging away from the shuttle. Oh, one of the new things actually is an improved uh, evacuation system from the whole pad. Seven minutes uh, and count. And that access arm there is the first step of that. That access arm, of course, is not new. That's something that we always have had. They're in the process now of connecting Orbiter the fuel cells up to the power the uh, shuttle's the electrical system. So far, position. so good. And the next thing to happen will be the pre-start the shuttle auxiliary power units. And that'll happen, uh, oh, in about, in about uh, 35 seconds. Dan, that is one item that has given us some troubles in the past. Kelly. That has been uh, a problem sometime in the earlier launches in particular. But the, so far, it looks pretty good. Auxiliary power units, or APUs, at the six-minute point. This consists of positioning okay, mission a number of and launch control is making preparations for starting up the hydraulic systems. At this point, what, what you have to realize is that the guts of the system are starting to come alive. They're getting ready to pre-start the APU, which means to put the 
uh, auxiliary power unit into its launch configuration. This power unit is powering the hydraulic system. Just to give you an idea of what's involved here, imagine an engine the size of what is in your car putting out 50,000 horsepower. That's what these auxiliary power units are doing. And you can imagine what's uh, involved in making sure that, that they all work successfully. Now, in about a half a minute, it's uh, T minus 5, 30, 30. The next important thing to happen to the auxiliary power units are activated to provide hydraulic power to the shuttle. And if any difficulty should develop in that, the auxiliary power units being activated to provide that hydraulic power to the shuttle, that would be trouble. So this is the thing to look for. Let's pick up uh, NASA's official voice on the countdown and see how that goes, the activating of those auxiliary power units. T-minus five minutes and counting. 